Thanks to the work of the Melee community, it's possible to play Super Smash Bros. Melee entirely online from a computer, even after almost 20 years since the game's release. And with COVID-19 forcing communities to shift to an online space, it's more important than ever to know how to set up Netplay so you can play Melee with friends or even compete in online tournaments. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Didn't I just release this video? Why am I making the same video again, especially so soon? Well, it's quite simple. A new version of Project Slippy is here and it's going to change everything, seriously. So this video will cover everything that's new with Slippy Online, how to set it up, and what's on its way in the near future. For the sake of simplicity, you can still skip ahead if you need to through the timestamps below, but let's get started. Let's start with what's new, Rollback Netcode. For those not in the know, Rollback Netcode is basically the ideal way to play fighting games online. It allows for a smooth feeling similar to playing offline Melee, and it won't halt the game in the way that we're currently used to. Up until this point, Melee Netplay used delay-based netcode, which handles situations where your opponent's controller inputs were delayed by lag by stalling the game and waiting to receive the input. This is obviously not ideal for a game as fast as Melee, as it often meant losing neutral, dropping a punish, or, in the worst cases, accidentally killing yourself because the game literally stopped momentarily to accommodate the lag. Unfortunately, this is just the reality of delay-based netcode, and even with the best connections, it's not possible to avoid this issue entirely. Rollback, however, handles lag very differently. Instead of stalling the game, Rollback opts to continue to play with the opponent's last known input, then once the updated input comes in, it re-simulates the game using the correct inputs. Because of this, a game of melee on Rollback netcode would handle a lag spike by continuing the game as normal, then slightly teleporting the opponent to reposition them after the input is received. What you're seeing on screen is an example of a high ping match using Rollback netcode. Even in the most turbulent of pings, you'll still be able to play the game with a very smooth feel, and the visual artifacts that Rollback creates are significantly more palatable than the game full on stopping like it used to. Plus, better connections will rarely experience those visual artifacts in the first place. If you're still not sold on Rollback Netcode, the Slippy team has already received feedback from various pro players below who've tested the game and that feedback was 100% positive. I've also tried it myself and it feels great even on pings higher than 100. Which leads me to my next point, what switching to Rollback Netcode means for matchmaking. One of the major limitations of netplay on delay-based netcode was that you couldn't really play anyone especially far away from you. This meant that in North America, where I live, players essentially had to stick to their respective coasts when picking who to play with. On a broader level, this also meant that modern netplay tournaments had to run region-locked brackets rather than just having the best players duke it out. Slippy Online solves this problem. Thanks to the improved netcode, you can now comfortably play netplay across much larger distances. This means that all of North America will be able to play Melee online with each other, and will even allow other regions to play across the world with significantly reduced lag. This would allow for a ton of overlap from scenes that don't usually interact with each other, such as the West Coast in Japan. While this doesn't mean we'll suddenly have a completely global experience on netplay, it's an enormous improvement in terms of opportunity, and it's honestly just what the scene needed during COVID. If you're curious about the details and have played netplay in its previous form, Slippy Online allows us to play someone with a ping as high as 110 milliseconds on the equivalent of 8 buffer with minimal issues. Which reminds me, the previous buffer system has also changed. Slippy Online will run on a consistent buffer, meaning you don't have to worry about messing with your muscle memory or setting it depending on the ping of your opponent. No more dividing ping by 8 or fiddling with your personal buffer, just one buffer across all matches. Slippy Online will also have automatic updates, so you won't need to download new versions each time they fix bugs or make changes, which is a huge quality of life improvement in my opinion. Finally, Slippy Online has built-in matchmaking, so you can find someone to play with without having to log onto a separate website like Smash Ladder. This means you won't have to worry about sending codes back and forth or dealing with toxic opponents. You can just find an opponent and play them. So now that we know why this update is such a big deal and why it was worth an entirely new video, how do we set it up? And what will we need? Well, the good news is, if you have previous netplay experience, a lot of it is still the same. To play Melee online, you're going to need a couple things. One, a computer that can handle the game. Two, a controller adapter. Three, a Melee ISO. Four, Slippy Online. Five, good internet. And six, a wired connection. In fact, because of the improved netcode, you could actually play on Wi-Fi as it will be significantly better, but a wired connection is still preferable and will provide much more flexibility when you're playing people from farther away. Okay, so let's break it down in that order, starting with your computer. At the moment, there hasn't been extensive testing in terms of the exact minimum requirements for Slippy Online, but it's very likely that if you could play Netplay previously, you'll be able to play Slippy Online. However, the most important component that affects your experience is still your CPU, so if you're looking to build a netplay-ready machine or upgrade an existing machine, start with choosing a powerful CPU first. 
From there, you'll need an adapter. Right now, I only have experience with two options, the Mayflash 4-port adapter and the official GameCube adapter made by Nintendo. While there are other manufacturers, I don't actually have experience with them and can't recommend them, as cheaper adapters can add a lot of lag, so this isn't really the area you want to cheap out on, in my opinion, especially since the Mayflash adapter is already quite affordable. Also, make sure to set it to Wii U mode when you use it. Okay, next up is the Melee ISO. If you're not aware, that's basically just the game itself. So the legality of ISOs is a bit of a gray area, so do some digging to find one that works. Thankfully, a working Melee 1.02 ISO just happened to be on my computer. Wow, so lucky. So I'm good to go. Now you'll need to download the program that essentially emulates a GameCube on your PC. In this case, a version of Dolphin known as Slippy Online. You can find a download link in the description of this video, and once you've downloaded it, extract it to its own folder using your preferred software. Personally, I would recommend 7-Zip as it's free and it works great. After you've unzipped it, you'll need to open Dolphin itself. At this point, most of the default settings are actually ready to go, so there's only a couple remaining steps. First, you'll need to direct Dolphin so it knows where to find the Melee ISO. You know, the one that magically appeared on your computer? Locate the folder that the ISO is in, in my case it's in my Documents folder, and select it. In the future, you should put any other ISOs in the same folder that you want to play on, so they'll appear in the drop-down menu below. Next, you'll want to click on the Graphics button in the menu, and from there, make sure you check the Use Full Screen option, as running the game in windowed mode will be quite a bit laggier. Again, do not run the game in windowed mode. We legit have pro players who don't know this and then complain about how laggy netplay is, so don't be that guy. I'd also recommend checking the show FPS and show netplay ping boxes. Finally, if your computer can handle it, you can go to the enhancements tab, click on the internal resolution menu, and upscale the game to 720p or 1080p or even higher to play Melee in HD. However, make sure to test if your computer can handle these settings by again, trying the game offline first. Either way, it's perfectly fine to leave the settings unchanged. It's really just a preference thing. You also need to ensure that you've installed drivers for your adapter to work properly. If you've installed VJoy drivers in the past, make sure to uninstall them before moving on. Now you need to download Zadig to install the drivers. From there, open the options menu and click on list all devices. Then click on the drop down menu and select WP-028. Then ensure the USB ID is 057E0337. If you do not see this, then try plugging the adapter, specifically the black USB cord, into a different USB port. Make sure to select Win USB, then you can hit Replace the Driver. If it all worked out, you should be able to go to Dolphin, click on the Controllers tab, and see whether your adapter has been detected. Now you're ready to play. In the latest version of Netplay, all you need to do is double click on the ISO or select it and press the play button. You won't need to host a Netplay lobby like you used to. From here, you'll see this screen asking you to log in. Press A and a tab will open up in your browser taking you to this screen. First you'll need to create an account, then you'll need to choose a connect code. This will be what you send to friends if you want to connect to them directly, so make sure to choose a code that you like as you won't be able to change it. Next, click this button to copy the file location information, then right click on this button and hit save link as. Now, paste that text that you just copied into the file name. This will ensure that it's saved in the right place with the right information, then hit save. If everything was done correctly, you should hear this sound. Finally, if you can, please consider supporting the project. If you're not familiar with Fizzy, he literally quit his job to work full-time on Project Slippy. In the span of seven months, he created rollback netcode for Melee, something Nintendo, a billion dollar company, still hasn't done with Ultimate. Even before this, Project Slippy gave our community access to replays, statistics, and high quality streaming options. It's people like this that keep the game alive, and I can honestly say this new build is going to change Melee forever. So if you can spare some money, please consider supporting him on Patreon or through a direct donation. I personally have been supporting him on Patreon for quite some time, and I think it's totally worth it if it means he can dedicate his full attention to the project. Anyway, if everything was done correctly, you should hear this sound from Dolphin, and will now have access to this menu. The rest is pretty easy. If you want to play an unranked game, navigate to the unranked menu. Choose your character and press start to search for an opponent. Once a nearby opponent is found, you'll get right into the game. However, if you're looking to practice with a specific opponent or friend, navigate to the direct menu. Once again, select your character, then press start on your controller. Here you'll be asked to enter the connect code of your opponent. Once you've done that, hit start and you'll connect with them. If you made a mistake entering the code, you can always press the Z button and start again. And that's pretty much it. As you can see, Slippy Online is ready to go without the use of a third party website or app but you can still use Smash Ladder or Discord if you're interested in chatting with someone. On top of all of this, there are plenty of additional features coming to Slippy Online in the near future. At the moment, there's currently no stage select screen, but I've been told that's coming soon and is a top priority. 
There will also be support for a spectator mode, which will be huge for online tournaments, but perhaps the most exciting is a fully functional rank system built directly into the client. This system is still in development, but Fizzy and the team have received input from pro players and are looking to make it the best they can, so stay tuned for more updates. You can always follow Fizzy on Twitter so you don't miss the news. Now it's time for the troubleshooting section. Once again, this version of Dolphin is still very new, so I expect there will be some bugs on their end. However, with automatic updates built into the client, you won't have to worry about needing to download a new version whenever there are changes made. Many problems are often on the user end anyway, and they generally fall into three categories. Those categories are your computer can't handle Dolphin, network issues, and desync issues. I've already discussed the computer issues, but network issues can be resolved in a variety of ways. The most important thing is to play with the wired ethernet connection and broadband or cable internet. This will reduce variance in ping and allow for a smooth connection with minimal rollback artifacts. But if you're having trouble playing an opponent, you can always play with someone else. Also, like I said before, I will be making an advanced guide and it will cover network issues, so subscribe if you want to see that video. This leads us to the final issue, desync issues. What is desync anyway? Desyncs often occur when something different is happening on both sides of the netplay game. The inputs are still the same on both ends, but perhaps the timing is slightly off and this causes problems. The best way to avoid desyncs is to ensure your settings are identical to your opponent. Right now, Slippy Online is still early in development, but many of the previous causes of desyncs should theoretically no longer be a problem. That means that the most likely cause of a desync with this build would be having a different ISO than your opponent. So make sure you have the correct ISO. You can do this by opening up Dolphin, right clicking on the melee ISO, going to properties, info, MD5 checksum, and clicking compute. From there, it will generate a code and make sure that code is identical to the one on screen right now. And that's it for the video. In the next video, I'm going to cover more advanced ways to get the most out of your Netplay experience. Obviously, this updated guide took priority, but we should expect the part two video sometime next week. In the video, I'll cover changes to your bio settings, changes to your display settings, changes to your network settings, audio settings, and more. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell to get notified whenever I make a new video. You can also support my channel on Patreon. I make tutorials and video essays related to Melee, and the more support I get on Patreon, the more I can dedicate time to my content. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next week for part two.